Hello and welcome to another episode of the Miggle Frost Show. Today, um, I'm gonna start off by saying that there'll be some changes to the show, um, because the up close and personal part most of the time isn't really that personal. It's mostly just me talking about my interests, about movies, about video games, about comics and stuff like that. Uh, so I think I'm gonna change the title, or maybe even split it up into different things. I might sometimes do some more personal stuff. I have some uh, things in mind that I would like to talk about, but it 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 takes a lot of preparing and stuff like that. So I don't really have that much time to prepare that. And if I do have time, I seem to forget to prepare it. So if I one day uh, kind of like feel like I have the time to do it, uh, a more deep discussion, so a more deep topic, a more personal topic, I might do that, but I think I'm gonna keep it um, kinda, uh, I was about to say superficial, but I guess that is kinda the wrong, the right word, it's it's just that the word superficial has been kinda, mostly is taken in a bad way, but it's not meant in a bad way now, it's just, uh, what I mean is, I will keep it like, you know, something not too personal, like the video games and movies and stuff like that, TV shows, comics, maybe something about animals, maybe some more about traveling and stuff like that. Because those, uh, I don't really have to prepare much. Uh, not that I mind preparing, but I'm not just not good at it. I'm not good at kind of scripting things out because I, well, I forget to do stuff. I still haven't found my bloody pen. I found it and then it disappeared again. Huh. I really wonder where it went. It's kind of weird. I should probably tidy up some. Not that it needs to be tidied up that much, but... I mean, apparently enough for my pen to disappear. Half an hour after I found it again. Uh, well, anyway. Today's show, the parts of the show, will of course be current gaming, where I talk about the video games that I'm currently playing, or have or have finished, off ca camera, the ones that I don't play for my YouTube channel. Then we have whatever the title of the new segment is going to be, the, the, the segment formerly known as Up Close and Personal. I'm gonna do a mega symbol for it instead. <laughs> um... Hope people get that reference. Um, then we're gonna have, of course, movie of the week, and then we have the spotlight. So let's get into the first thing that is current gaming, and there's a lot of things to talk about because I have finished two games, I've started two games, and I've I'm continued another. Let's start off by the first game that I have ended. It's actually a a game that most of you probably didn't know I had started. Uh, I uh, I can't remember if I. Oh. Did I? Last episode I talked about the Dana Nightstone uh, novel game series, and I talked about playing uh, under a Tuscan under Tuscan skies. I can't mention. No, I don't really know if I mentioned that I finished it. If not, then there'll be another. Yeah, but I have I finished that game. Yeah. I didn't talk about finishing it. That's what I'm talking about now. I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I finished... Weird sounds. Shh. Quiet. I'm recording a video. But yeah, I finished Under Tuscan Skies. And I decided to continue with the, the Dana Nightstone games and playing the next one in the series which is called uh... Death Under... Death... Uh, something about Austrian... something. Damn it, I can't remember and I don't wanna, like... Uh... Excuse me, I'm just gonna do this. You can watch that for a moment. Uh... Death upon an Austrian son son sonata. So I so there you go. Just have to click out a minute. And it's a really fun game. Once more, I really love these Big Fish games. They are not created by Big Fish. They're published by Big Fish, but they seem to have like a a, a similar feel to the most of them. Um, 
It's really good. It's a, it's a little bit harder than the previous one. I think that most of the games in the, s the different Big Fish series s tend to get a little more difficult per game, so that's good. There's one more uh, game in the Dana Nightstone novel series, and I'll probably do that. I'll probably finish this game here. Um, and you know, in the week and do the next one. But yeah, Under the Tuscan Sky, amazing game. Really fun, really great story. I really enjoy the story, and I like how you travel around in the, to different areas uh, in the game. That was really, really well done. Uh, some nice puzzles, some nice adventuring, nice story. This new game uh, has a really awesome story so far, and the puzzle seems not really that complicated, but the the adventure game part of the game has actually become more uh, advanced than in many of the other uh big fish game so i enjoy that but um so yeah that was one game s finished and another game started now the other games i the game i finished is batman the, uh arkham asylum and i'm going to do a a quick review of that game now that was an awesome game but it had it had its issues the the thing i enjoyed the most were probably like the stealth part where you have to sneak up on people or like jump around on top of the gargoyles that was really really fun and like s slide d down your with your bat thing grappling hook and grabbing people and stuff like that really 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 fun now the, the, and then there were the bosses and the problem is it goes from a game where you actually have to think like stealth and then the bosses is basically just a click fest you have to constantly click your mouse button and you and half the time you can't control what's going on because it's just random you fly from one screen of the end of the screen to the other and that was really one of the bad things about the game but i it was an overall enjoyable game it was a bad badly ported though uh the controls you had no control over the controls basically you couldn't change the controls uh, other than that, they did, because of the console, of course, has limited uh, buttons, they didn't bother, like, extending it to the PC and just have more buttons, which meant that half the time you were trying to do one thing and ended up doing another because the button will had multiple functions. For instance, you had to counter uh, in an attack by pressing the right mouse button but if you didn't do that on time you would use one of your tools then there were the the jump button being the same as the run button and which meant to that to jump uh, out of the way you had to double tap and half the time even though you press the right directional key uh, uh, and by right I mean the correct directional key it would go a, d a different way than you wanted it to so the boss battles were kinda like I said a click fest uh, and no tactics whatsoever. You couldn't really control what the your, what Batman did during those battles, uh, with a few exceptions of some attacks like um, like the stun attack and the counter attack. But most of the time, that just messed up something as well. But all all in all, a great game. But there was one thing about the game, and this was not only that game, but if you probably know, on this channel, I have also finished um, Alice, Madness Returns, and those both of those games had something that really made me extremely confused. The percentage of the game didn't go to 100 when I finished it. And I know why. I've, of course I know why. It's because... Basically, the 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 thing that says the game is now fifty percent done. It isn't from the beginning of the and to the end of the game. They count all the bonus materials along with that. So if you haven't found all the bonus materials in Batman Arkham Asylum, there's a lot of Riddler things and a lot of other things you can find all over the place. So when I finished the game, I didn't really care about most of these things, extra bonus things. I only care about bonus things if they actually do something in the game, and these don't. This is just, I don't know, it's like collecting items. But yeah, so when I finished the game, it was actually still 56% done. So when I went into the what happened to be the final fight, it said like 54% done. And I was like, oh, there's lots of games left uh, still. But there wasn't. That's confusing as hell, and I'm just going to turn it into daytime. That's really stupid. 
like it shouldn't count the bonus things. I don't really care about cake, and I know why. I, I have an idea why they put in a lot of bonus things, but because it seems to be a lot of console games have a lot of bonus things, and that's because getting extra materials and mods and user-made uh, content to uh, the console games isn't really possible, so therefore they have to rely on in-game things to keep the replayability up. So that if you haven't, if you completed the game, you can still see, oh, there's still some things I haven't found in the game, so now I play it again. But is that really what people do these days? Try to find everything? If it, if it, if it at least had some function in the game. But most of the things in Batman Arkham Asylum didn't have anything to do with either the story or the game. It was just like a scavenger hunt. That shouldn't be included in how many percentage of the game is done. That's bonus stuff. When I'm done with a game, it should read 100% done. I'm at the end, and we're seeing the credits, and it's still 56% done? That is stupid. Don't have bonus material count as the game. The game should be... Ugh. Yeah, sorry. But that's just... Playing, that's, I don't know if that is a, just a console thing, but now I've played, I've seen it in Alice Madness, Madness Returns and Batman Arkham Asylum, which is both ported game from the, the console, both kind of badly ported, but both still awesome games. Anyway, moving on. The game that I have chosen to replace my Batman Arkham Asylum, I have started playing um, Rainbow Six Vegas, which is just amazing. I have played it before, uh, never completed it, and uh, my the, the save games for that game is actually... I don't know where they went. I think it was on my old computer. And since the game isn't through Steam or anything like that, I can't just find my, my save games again. But that's okay, it's been a while since I actually played it last, so... I actually did want to start over anyway, and it's a really, really super fun game. I'm not most normally I'm not really into a lot of those kind of games, like realistic uh, military simulators or whatever you're gonna want to call it. But this one is really, I think it's just it's amazing. It is also I saw recently a top ten um, Ubisoft games and. Ubisoft, of course, has most of the Tom Clancy games, and of all the the, the Rainbow Six games, they chose uh, Rainbow Six Vegas. So that's a good uh, sign, right? It's a really fun game. If you haven't played it, you should. You should. It's not really. I don't know what it cost these days. I bought it uh, some time ago, but it, it's it's an older game, so it's probably not. It doesn't cost that much. There's a sequel out to it. I haven't played that one yet. But yeah, Rainbow Six Vegas. And lastly, I am still playing. Uh, Crimecraft. That's the name. Uh, I'm now level. I think I'm level 12 or level 13. I haven't played it the last couple of days, but um, still really fun game. Although kind of sexist. It's it's kind of sexist game. Uh, it's <laughs> if you choose a female character, which I did. If you you knew that if you saw my um my bonus video last Sunday, not this Sunday, but last Sunday. If you choose a female character and you have to customize it, well, all you can get is high heels. Really? High heels? We're talking about a game where you're in combat zone, like with big guns and stuff like that, and out killing people, and you walk around in high heels. Come on! That's not good. The high heels is not good, basically. I mean, I never really understood why women want to wear high heels. I mean... It's pretty bad for your feet. That's I, I think that's why women enjoy having their feet rubbed a lot. I, 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 it's because they wear uncomfortable shoes. Why would you ever want to do that? High heels is one of the most useless piece of clothing item, I guess, shoes. Why would you want to wear a, a shoe that makes you uncomfortable? I, I, I mean... Women have to learn to wear high heels. It's not like it's just something they do. It's not like instinctively they know how to wear high heels. At first, they like, oh yeah, they trample around. But it's a female thing. It's a feminine thing. So they have to wear high heels. 
Jesus fucking Christ, talk about stupidity. No offense if you like wearing high heels. But, come on. I tried wearing high heels. Yeah, I have. This is, those shoes are uncomfortable as fuck. And it's like, it, it, it's the same with ties. It's the most useful piece of clothing. And I'm wearing a tie right now as my koala, I know, but that's, that, that's a koala. I mean, I'm talking about human beings. It's both like high heels and 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 uh, ties have one purpose to uh, to give a sense of class. They've been given a a value, a a symbolic value of to to symbolize class. The tie also given a symbolic value to symbolize you know power and stuff like that. But none of it makes sense if you just look at it it's the most useless piece of clothing ever sorry i was talking about games i don't know how i get into this but yeah why would i want to have my character in a combat s situation with guns why would i want my character to wear high heels that's extremely sexist just because oh this is a female character we have to make her high wear high heels why not give her a dress while you add it jesus sorry well <laughs> that kind of pisses me off and they do that with a lot of games all of the female characters in gaming seems to have in a lot of the mmos especially they have to show extreme amounts of skin and but 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 the high heels that's just that's just stupid jesus anyway <laughs> um moving on to my next point let's uh, jump over this table whoa oh that was actually pretty well done playing in third person reversed woo oh woo do 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 actually i'm think i'm going to go into first person but yeah, yeah, like always, nothing has been built here. I really should get ba get back to building here. Um, but yeah, my uh, up close and personal, or the the segment formerly known as up close and personal, will today be about good gaming. I talked about uh, a couple of uh, w weeks ago. I talked about bad gaming, so I thought, why not do uh, a part about good gaming, or more precisely things I would like to see in gaming or that I like in gaming um, and I basically have three different uh, subjects topics in that category that I would like to see more of in gaming number one is realism I'm not talking about combat realism where you die from getting shot in the head like one shots and stuff like that I'm not talking about the I'm more talking about stuff like you have to eat you have to drink you have to sleep you have to use bandages if you bleed you have to d d I don't know take pills I don't know stuff like that I really enjoy that in gaming especially the thing with with the 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 eating and drink and also that you have to like in in MMOs and uh, open world games that you have to you can only sell items to certain people I know that they included that in uh, in, um, in Skyrim but they don't have it in Fallout in Fallout games you can for instance sell um, weapons to a food dealer and the other way around I like when you can't do that uh, so more realism would be really nice that that things actually take time to craft and stuff like that rather than just oh yeah I just crafted this in zero seconds or I just crafted this while running around jumping and stuff like that I would more more realism not combat realism that's one thing I would like to see more of in games another thing and and these are these three things I'm talking about all kinda fit well together the next thing is more uh, random more uh how do you say this more uh things to do as if that makes sense i would like to see you be able to wash the floor or sweep the floor or make f make dinner or or d drive a a truck or stuff like that more of these smaller things in game especially in the open world game for instance let's just take a game like like skyrim I'd actually be able like to be able to take a broom and sweep the floor to take a fishing rod and go fishing or 
or, or cut down a tree with an axe or if a more modern game then maybe take a mow the lawn with the lawn mower and these should not be be like gay things in game that you have to do like but more kind of mini games i guess could be a game in which you you mow the lawn to get more money and you actually had to do it and stuff like that they did a little, little bit of that in a, in a game like bully for instance and i know that they have some of it in get down from there hey get down get down <laughs> oh, he's like, how rude! Get down! Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and also games like uh, Rockstar actually has a lot of the the smaller mini games. You can play tennis, you can play golf, stuff like that. And I would actually like to see a lot of different games being put together, like and to into one big game. Like a lot of these, I think I've been talking about this earlier. A lot of the different simulators, like farming simulator and truck simulator and stuff like that, have all those things like. First, like, made better, all got get rid of all the weird box, and then put them together as one big game where you can, like, have a world simulator and you can do different jobs and stuff like that. That is something I would very, really, very much like to see. Uh, and the last thing uh, of these three things, there are other things I'd like to mention too, but the last thing is uh, more interaction in games. And this c has pretty much something to do with the rest of it. I like, I like to like be able to turn on the faucet, I like to be able to open a fridge, open cupboards, like uh, just not necessarily things that have a purpose, but just the, the ability to, to do that. Go up to a faucet and turn it on and turn it off, or a shower, or a toilet. Like, you know, kind of like you had in uh, Duke Nukem 3D. And Duke Nukem Forever, which I actually enjoyed. I never, I don't understand why people didn't enjoy Duke Nukem Forever. It's an, in my opinion, it was an awesome game. Yes, it wasn't what you expected, and yes, it wasn't uh, Duke Nukem 3D, but it was, it was a fun game. And that game had a lot of interaction. You could like put p popcorn in the microwave. You could turn on faucet. You could like, you could literally throw shit. You could interact with shit. Come on, how many games does that? Not that I necessarily want that, but that's... I really loved uh, Duke Nukem 3 and Duke Nukem Forever for... Individually, not as a whole. I mean, yes, if you compare Duke Nukem Forever with Duke Nukem 3D, yes, it's not as good. But why do that? Just see it as a different game. That's the way I do it. Jesus Christ. Excuse me, I'm just gonna turn off the rain. Because I don't want to get wet. So that would be another thing in game, where you actually whether actually had a function other than just being annoying that you'd get wet or something like that. See, that would be fun. But yeah, more interaction in game and and but the most important thing I would like to see in games, and this is a thing that I see that a field becomes rarer and rarer. That is a good combination of great gameplay. And a great story. It seems that most games these days have one of the two. Or maybe a little bit of both. But one of them is more dominant. Now if you take a look at like. I haven't played. Uh, I, I like to say I haven't played this game. But look at a game like The Last of Us. Like I said I haven't played it. But I've seen a playthrough of it. And it feels like. It feels like that game. If you removed the story from that game. It would be. And put in a more mediocre story. It would be boring as fuck because it's a lot of the same over and over again. The game that that the thing that keeps that game going, in my opinion, is the story rather than than the actual gameplay. That might just be me, but I feel a lot of games have that. And the other way around, that you have a great game with great gameplay, but almost no story at all. I feel like a lot of people, and this is, now we get into a little bit of bad gaming again, but not really, not really. I wish more people would start working with some of the stuff they already have, instead of just constantly have to reinvent themselves. Like, for instance, a good example is IT. IT soft uh, tend to, like, make one ga a gaming engine, and then they make one game, and then we don't see any games from them in the next three or four years and then because they need to reinvent themselves each time now th now the the it tech um 
5 or 6, I can't remember, the one with Rage was a great dungeon. Why not make more games using that? And actually, a, a lot of people don't seem to like Rage. I thought that was an awesome game. That was a lot of that was a lot of interaction in that game as well. I I, I thought I, and it was a little too linear, a little bit too linear, and uh, invisible walls and stuff like that. But other than that, a really awesome game. But and I don't know why. I would rather have them like build more games on the same engine, because everybody seems to have like they want the the game to be the newest, have a new engine, and they always have to like have this new special feature that nobody else have. Like it could be turning back time, it could be a gravity gun, it could be the ability to to like I don't know, do other things. <laughs> I don't know what. But yeah, it, it the the gaming gaming seems to be reinventing feeling the need to reinvent themselves all the time. I just want some good games with a great story. A game like I mean, if you look at it again, just to take those again them again, you have Back when they began, they were like putting out like four, three or four games a year, maybe every second year, maybe in the duration of two years. But now it's like one game every third to four years. And the games take so much longer because they constantly have to make sure that they're the newest of graphics and stuff like that. And if a game doesn't have like the newest graphics uh, or stuff like that, it, it doesn't get noticed. It becomes. It feel. It, that's a. That's a. And here's a term I don't really like. The game feels dated. Really, I enjoy playing games from all ages, including the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. But, and it doesn't really matter to me if the game doesn't have the new, the really awesome 3D graphics, or if the game has like the newest features and stuff like that. Like for instance, a good example. That a game like um what's it called? Turning Point, Fall of Liberty, a game in which is a kind of what if kind of game where it where is it questions what if what if what would have happened if the Nazis has had invaded uh, the US. And that's this that's an interesting game. It has some nice gameplay, it has some nice level design, it has some nice uh, a nice story. But yes, the graphics seemed a little dated, and uh, it doesn't have like a special feature or mechanic, and it had some bugs, but come on, what game doesn't? Uh, but the game was actually pretty fun, but it didn't get really good, very good reviews, and it was kind of overlooked, and because it felt dated. And... And really, and then we take a look at what uh, people are playing. Oh yeah, all these indie games that have ultra pixelated graphics. Oh no, that's uh, that's okay because they're indie games. Really, really, gaming industry. Jesus Christ. But yeah. So what I want to see in gaming is more interaction, more like mini games, like realistic things to do, like sweeping and fishing and cooking and stuff like that, more of that in game, and uh, more, um, wait, realism, yeah, that was it, realism, a game I would actually uh, like to see, oh, funny story, just a little small story first, I've always kind of uh, played everything immersive. I like playing immersive, I really do. So back in the days, we're talking like the early 90s, when I had my Commodore 64, there was a game called Pit Stop 2. You can go back and watch. I actually did a video of that game. But basically, this is a very, very, very simple game. You have a car, or a Formula, Formula 1 car, and, um, wait, what did I do? I said weather to clear. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you had a, and uh, you drive in a, in a, in a race course and you your tires would be destroyed and your 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 gas you run out of gas so you sometimes you have to go into the pit stop basic simple game but i like to actually role play in that game that it wasn't a, ra a race though i was just a guy out driving on a road trip and when i went into pit stop that would be like kind of a, a stop for the night a motel or something like that so i would actually play it and uh, i would race around like uh, this and um and and just not really worry about how fast I was going. And then when I would get to a pit stop, I would go in here, like this, and I would step away from the computer because now I was at a pit stop. I would do other stuff, <laughs> and and that was a, I, and 
stuff like that, and I would actually play, I sometimes would combine other games with that and say like, oh yeah, this game has a connection with that game, as in the same universe, even though they no way weren't. But what I'm trying to say is that I like to, that's the kind of, I, I want games with more interaction and more mini games and stuff like that, where I can, it doesn't necessarily have to be, I like to have games where I can play immersive basically where I can f really feel that I'm a part of it I would actually w really much like a road trip game does that exist I just <laughs> that would be awesome uh, a game where you have to drive and like kind of follow the law not drive too fast and stop at red lights you have to go into uh, stops and you have to pick up gas and then maybe have some mini games to uh, where you and that could be sweeping or mowing the lawn or making a delivery so you can make money uh, and then maybe have some tourist attractions you'd go to and kind of take pictures off and stuff like that. That would be an awesome game. More games like that. I I feel like a lot of the games seem to have a few functions, a story, and when and when that game is over, there's really no replayability. Also because mo mo a lot of the games are really un modder friendly, especially the ones that are ported from the console. I would really very much like to see more games that have modder friendly l Oh shit, what the hell? What the hey dude, get away from me. Oh god, that was scary. Uh but yeah, more modder friendly games, like a lot of Bethesda always make their games modder friendly, that's amazing. Duke Nukem three D was modder friendly, but Duke Nukem Forever wasn't, which is a shame and more because with games like a lot of Bethesda's game, you can actually make all the stuff that I want, I, that I like in game, more interaction, more immersion, and stuff like that, more realism. Um, and I don't know, I would very much like to have games that instead of just having a story that kept me interested for a while, and I would have games that you could go back and play in another way. Like for instance, Batman Arkham Asylum. You pretty much that there's no replayability in that game, unless of course you care about collectibles, which, which I actually don't. So, but if there had been more to the game, like for instance, a game like uh, GTA GTA Five, that it it seems extreme linear. I would rather uh, the story-based gaming of that part. There's really no, not many choices you can make throughout that game. If they had done that, that would have been like a s much better game in my opinion. Like, put in some more choices. Do you want to do it this way? Do you want to do it that way? And stuff like that. That would influence the story and you could like replay it and try some other choices. But it seems that it, it has very much limited story. Pretty sad story to it. Uh, Yes, there is a lot of mini games, and that's what I think I like about a game like GTA 5, and I really hope it does come out for the PC. I'll play the hell out of it, but I probably would enjoy more just playing it my way rather than the gate, the story mode. I would play the story mode, of course, but that a game like GTA 5 and all the, it would then have, and all the other GTA, I really haven't played much of those, but they would have replayability because you could make up your own stories in them. Batman Arkham Asylum and Alice Madness Returns and a lot of other modern games, uh, games and semi-modern games, modern games like that, it doesn't really have replayability in that way where you can kind of make up your own story. And that is one of the things I really, really enjoy most in the ga in, in in gaming. I remember playing Duke Nukem 3D uh, back in the in the 90s, late 90s. And whenever there was a user level, I really I made up my own story to these user levels and tried to like fit them into the rest of the Duke Nukem universe. Even though some of the user levels actually had a story, and but I would uh, rather make up my own, and that was the cool thing about a game like the Nukem. You could you could make up your own story and like have these user levels. You could make your own user levels, which I actually did to toy a little with, and make up your own story like that. And a game like Fallout, I've been playing the, uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. I've been playing again and again. And made up kind of my own universe, my own story, and used a lot of ma ma m m mods. Sorry, fucked up there. And kind of 
like had is uh, that you had to eat and I, I even if um and I would like sleep even though you don't didn't really need to and stuff like that and that's kind of the things I'm also doing with um Fall Earth right now in my uh, one of my playthroughs you'll see you'll the pro you you pro oh you already seen sorry I'm recording this on Monday so you'll have would have seen if you if you watched it of course the next part of my uh, Fall Earth the Sarah the the Sarah Jinx Chronicles. I was about to say the Sarah Connor Chronicles, but that's something else. You'll see how I play immersive, and I wish more games would have the uh, the pos the option of doing that, like just playing him or really having a lot of the things that I pretend is there in the game. Oh, shit! This broke a door. Oh, can't actually see. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think I've, uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to talk about today, about good gaming. Hope, uh, hope that made sense. Uh, and, um, let me know what you really like about gaming. Let me know if uh, the things that I talked about, if that's something that you also want. Uh, if you have any questions to what I just said, because I fucked some up for some of it probably explained some of it poorly but if you have any questions please let me know I will gladly answer them hello that guy shaky said no 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 more no more no more well fuck you there's going to be plenty of more you're stuck here forever <laughs> anyway gotta turn on the projector da -da 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 -da. I need a door here, actually. Do I still have the door? Yes, I do. Ta-da! Should probably make this building a little better looking. And this one, too. This one is but good looking. I like this building. This looks great. Anyway, we have come to the next part of the show. The part which I would like to call... Which I, I am calling... Uh... Movie of the week, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> I forgot for a moment there. But yeah, the movie of the week. I haven't actually seen that many movies during this last week, but one movie stood out. And that movie is called Big Night. This is a movie starring Tony Shalhoub, uh, Stanley Tushy, Mini Driver, Ian Holm, and Isabella Rossellini, and Liv Schreiber in a very small part. I think this is one of his early roles before he got a really got a career going on. But yeah, this is a movie about two brothers played by Tony Shalhoub and um, Stanley Tucci. Uh, it's a, about these two brother Italian brothers who own a restaurant, and it's not really going that well. So. Uh, a friend of theirs, well, mostly a friend of Stanley Tucci's uh, character, played a friend of his, his, played by Ian Holm, offers to help them out by inviting a famous jazz musician to come to their restaurant and kind of have uh, so they would get some attention. Of that so they so that's the, what the movie about is about them getting ready for this big night, which will make them or break them. And this is really awesome. This is a this is a slow paced movie. So if you don't like slow paced movie, then this is probably not for you. This is it, it, there really isn't much going on, and that's I like that kind of movies. That it's a very there's a lot of conversation. You feel a lot of uh, their emotions. You see them like how they struggle, how they stress about it. There's some fun scenes as well. It's a really 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 awesome movie. It's it's before I think I think uh, Stanley no not Stanley so you, well. Him as well, but mostly Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub wasn't really that famous at the, that time. Um, it was before I think this is before he started doing Monk. Uh, he hadn't really. I think. He, I mean, he had of course been in in Wings. Uh, <laughs> other than that, and probably some other roles as well. But I think this is before he really like broke out of the, like into fame. Really broke into fame. Um, but it, he does a, a great Italian. I don't know if he's actually Italian. I know Ian Holm is not Italian, but he they m both but they speak Italian. So, but maybe they learned uh, for the roles, even though it didn't say so on IMDb. So, I don't know. But yeah, um, awesome movie, Big Night. 
Um, I had something else I wanted to talk about now that we're here at the cinema. What the fuck was it? Hmm. Just give me a minute. Um. Well, maybe it wasn't that important. I guess it wasn't. But yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome movie. With great actors. Really, really great actors. And it's a, it's one of those movies that I feel is more... It's better. It's now I know what I was going to talk about. Uh, but yeah, because one of the things that I noticed about when I was on IMDb was that, you know, on IMDb, on the, uh, in the side, there's like these um, lists where you can see like user-made lists of other movies. And the two top one of those, one uh, big night, was actually overrated movies and underrated movies. So it was by one person it was considered overrated, and by another it was considered underrated, and that happens a lot. I've noticed. And the funny thing is, when you look at a lot of the people that that, that list where it was o overrated, most of those movies were actually movies that I enjoyed, and none of them were actually considered would I be considered overrated. Big Night would I be, nowadays it's become, I would consider it an underrated movie. Most of the people who watch this video right now probably have never heard of it. Not saying that you're like don't watch movies and stuff like that, not that you're dumb or anything, but I feel that it's a movie that kind of was big at one moment and then it kind of got forgotten, except for some uh, people. It's it's definitely not overrated, and I feel to me overrated movies is more movies like um, I don't know, Saving Private Ryan. I consider that to be an extremely overrated movie. It's it's an it's a great movie, but it's not like it's not as great as people make it to be. And speaking of Tom Hanks, we have Forrest Gump, another extremely overrated movie, uh, in my opinion. One of my friends actually said that, uh, and this was uh, not only about this movie, but also about other movies such as Rain Man, where he said that that it seemed that we needed some kind of a, a, a person with lower mental uh, abilities or a handicap to tell us how great life is and if you look at movies there is actually a lot of movies that try to to do that kind of show us oh yeah if this per I don't know you know what I mean right but anyway Forrest Gump another overrated movie I would say Avatar but to the, but to be honest Avatar isn't really I wouldn't consider it overrated because it does get a lot of uh, as much uh, bad reviews as it gets good reviews, I I, I think it's over, cra over rated on uh, IMDb. It gets a eight point zero, which is insane. It's not that good. It's not really actually good at all. Um, but another overrated movie would probably be like I don't know, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, the one with Kevin Costner. The only good thing about that movie is um, Alan Rickman as the sheriff. Oh, and Mary Elizabeth, Mr. Antonio, just for l looking good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like most movies that come out of Hollywood right now is overrated. The Avengers. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the movie; it was entertaining. But come on, it's an uh, it's a, uh, it's uh, it, it's just. An animated movie, basically. It's an animated superhero movie. They might as well have animated it. It's CGI fuckfest, basically. And most people, most movies are CGI fuckfest these days. It's just like people just goes to the movie and they're like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but basically it feels like everybody is all ab ab about this CGI and if you like one of those that come in your pants just so that there's some CGI, got good looking CGI, then that's probably a movie for you, The Avengers, because it's filled with it. The same with Avatar and Battleship and uh, a lot of the Lord of the Rings movie. It's just CGI orgasms all around in the theaters when stuff like that happens. Like, oh, that lamb is CGI and he just just in his pants right away. <laughs> and there's actually people that are so, I don't know, I've never really gotten into that whole CGI thing. It's, it's nice that you can make something with CGI, but come on, don't overdo it. 
one day actors will just be voice actors, but and that's only just until they find a way to actually eliminate that as well. I would rather watch a movie about two people having a conversation. Big Night, for instance. It's a movie about humans doing human stuff. Not about superheroes. I would rather read superheroes. The Avengers comics is ten times better than the movie. So read the comics rather than seeing the movie. It, uh, don't get me wrong. I wish they, I, I am going to see the next one, and I hope they make more. But to be considered as some of the greatest movies is like, no, they're not. That's just my opinion. Sure, I agree. It, it, it's just my opinion. But come on, uh, stop with the fucking CGI. I mean, really? I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But yeah, big night. Watch it. It is amazing. Also, remember to go check out my IMDb film list and uh, let me know what you think about it. If you have seen any of the movies, please let me know. It's a. Uh, I would like to know actually. Um, but yeah, let's uh, jump out of this minecart and go into first person again because. Wait, what? What's in my hand? Oh, a door. Let's get rid of that door. There we go. Get rid of that again. See you later, guys. And uh, for once, I actually remember to turn this off. Uh, oh, maybe not. Turn off. Thank you. Um, yeah. Do 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 do. This brings us to the last part of the oh show. Should probably put some stairs here. Should make gravel stairs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Stop panicking. There's nothing to panic about. But yeah, um, last part of the show is, of course, as always, da -da 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 -da. Oh, the spotlight. Oh, and this week I have chosen a channel called a a dose of Buckley. Wait, is that the title? Uh, a dose of Buckley. A dose of. Excuse me. This is very unprofessional. I know. I know. I know. But, uh, I might cut this part out, and then you wouldn't hear me speak. Um, do 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 a dose of Buckley. There it is. Yeah, sorry about that. Very <laughs> unprofessional. But I lost my pen. I can't write stuff. A dose of Buckley. It's a channel where a guy called Buckley, I can't remember his first name, he pretty much complains about stuff. <laughs> Like me. It, it it reminds me a lot of what I do sometimes. He kind of criticizes society and the music industry and the movie industry and stuff like that. He does a lot of... He does some videos about Miley Cyrus and... and um, What's he called? Justin Bieber. I luckily forgot. <laughs> I happily forgot his name. But yeah, he, he, he talks about how the music industry is like falling apart and how he recently did a video about Valentine's Day also where he talked about the that Valentine's Day has just become a day where you have to spend a lot of money on the ones you love and stuff like that instead of just doing that naturally and he, he does a great a lot of awesome movies where he criticizes Jesus Christ he criticizes society and the music industry and stuff like that but he does it he, he does it in a professional way. He does swear a lot and he does make some very hilarious uh comparisons where he and kinda puts them down in a very funny way. But he is actually does it seriously. I don't think that he he doesn't like just say, Oh, that's a bad or that music sucks. He actually explains why that music sucks and why those things in society is bad, why Justin Bieber is a fucking douchebag and stuff like that. And it's a really, really amazing channel. A dose of Buckley is the channel name and I'll of course be a link below. And I'm just gonna turn it into daytime. How do you do that? How do I, I do it like this? I forgot. So yeah. This is it. This is the show for now. Um, remember to check out the different links below to the movie, to the spotlight, and to my movie list. And uh, give it a like. Give it a thumbs up if you like what you see. If you don't like what you see, then just move on. Get on with your life. 
There's nothing else you can do. There isn't a dislike button. It does not exist on this channel. If you press the dislike button, you've broken the rules of this channel, and you should probably not be here. And comment if you have anything to say. Maybe you agree with me on some of the things I've said. Maybe you disagree. If you disagree, don't say things like you're stupid. If you do that, then you've just proven that you're in fact a stupid person. And um, yeah. Subscribe if you haven't already. Lots of fun is going to be had on this channel. And um, I'll see you next uh, Tuesday. I was about to say Monday. I'm recording this Monday. But I'll see you next Tuesday for more Michael Frost Show. And I'll see you tomorrow for more gaming. Remember, Thursday, Thursday, I'm starting a new game Thursday. So be there or be a rectangle. Bye.